Hello ladies and gentlemen, Datacron set 10 is upon us and Conquest is right around the corner so it's time to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly with this set. Uh, we're going to be going through uh, the stats, the alignment mechanics, the faction mechanics, and the character mechanics. Mechanics. Interestingly, this set is only light side, uh, so that's breaking from the past two sets where we had light and dark side, and I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it. We got a lot of factions. We have four factions in one alignment, so it's going to be hard to reroll the right thing and then a bunch of characters. So I'll give you tips on rerolling at the end, uh, but let's just cover what is good and bad about this set. But before I get into the specifics of this data crunch set, I just want to talk about an, an amazing change, an enormous change for this data crunch set. Uh, the relic requirements for everything have been reduced effectively by two for all of them. So for level one through three, to actually get the faction, the alignment bonus, you only need relic one and you can get those stats. To get four level four through eight, which is huge, you only need relic three. So I built my whole roster with the assumption I needed all at relic five. I won't complain because they are nice to have, uh, but being able to use all these stats up to relic, uh, all up to level eight with only relic three is amazing. And then being able to use a character mechanic, uh, level nine with just relic five is also amazing too. Cause all of the regrets I have are characters I took to R7 just for Datacron, and they were somewhat useful, but then they kind of lost that value. So this is an amazing change. But what's even more amazing is this change to the shipments, the Datacron shipments. This refreshes four times a day now. Every six hours it's gonna refresh, whereas before it was once a week, like weekly shipments. So the frequency with which you can buy from these shipments has multiplied by 28, and that is especially important for data cash. Every day, from just 2,500 charge up currency total, you can get 5 million data cash, which is insane. You will never have to hit that level, sector one bonus note ever again, except to get data crons. Um, this, I bought a couple just to try it out and use some, but I this is the worst value that's so expensive. Just hit the node, try to get data crons there. But once you get enough data crons, you don't have to keep hitting that node to get data cash. So you can actually very efficiently use all your materials. You don't have to keep dismantling data crons over and over again from your inbox. This is an amazing change. Uh, you don't really wanna buy Mark One or like the uh, build up materials, but you're gonna be able to buy so many reroll mats. Um, I wouldn't worry about the Mark 1s, I'll talk about them in a second. But you can buy so many reroll mats from this over and over again. Uh, and it pretty much removes the need to buy data cash with crystals, um, which I hope they don't take it away. But as of now, this is the best, biggest free to play uh, change for data crons ever. It's amazing. Now, the first, and in my opinion, the most important thing to look at with each data crunch set are the stats. And unfortunately, this one isn't looking so strong right off the bat. Uh, so in order of what I think their value is, we have armor penetration, offense, crit damage, and crit avoidance. Uh, these are definitely good, decent stats. Uh, crit avoidance, I think, is the only survivable or defensive-oriented stat in this set. And for survivability, it's kind of a weaker one. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of ways around that. But some Galactic Legends gets crit uh, chance so high, it doesn't matter, like Kylo Ren. Uh, but then armor penetration is definitely the most valuable, going up to 100%, and this is level seven slash eight values. Uh, if you get a level one or two, or level four or five, it's gonna be smaller, but just for simplicity's sake and screen space, only covering those end amounts for the highest level. I mean, definitely good, they're strong, but we also have crit chance again, um, and it's even worse at the low level because it rolls from one to 5% at level one and two, which is just pitiful. You get just 1% crit chance or like uh, a few dozen percent crit armor penetration. Um, it's not even contest. So that's a terrible stat, uh, but the worst stat of all is accuracy. It's back yet again, and we don't have dodge. Um, accuracy is ugly no matter what, because even when it's useful, it's ugly because that means we have dodge, and dodge is the worst. Uh, so in set eight, we had accuracy, and there was a lot of speculation that that, was, that meant set nine was gonna have dodge, and it did not. And I hope history repeats itself there that we still don't have dodge in set 11, because that wouldn't even make sense, because it would just be a half measure to remedy it 
Uh, it would be around for half of the set and then go away and then we would need to get accuracy again or something. Accuracy is just a terrible stat. Um, outside of dodge data crons, it barely plays any role. So these stats are overall as a whole pretty weak. I mean, yes, we got arm penetration, which is going to be helpful against all the defense in set 9. Overall, not enthusiastic about these stats. Now, time for the alignment mechanics. This is another quick segment. Uh, and in short, there aren't that many good ones. Uh, there's only actually one I labeled as good, and good is even a stretch. Uh, this we've had before. When allies gain a buff, recover 2% health and protection. That could mean getting a lot of recovery over time. If you have like Yoda, really buff heavy teams, uh, Yoda spreading buffs is like a mass heal. And then for General Skywalker, I put him there because it can give you the potential to recover banners on offense when typically you have no way to recover protection banners. Uh, but I don't think it's worth re rolling for this, um, even though all these others are pretty bad too. I'll just look at all of them, pull them all up. Also, highlighted in orange means it is bad ugly. Ugly means it can be either super good or super bad. Highlighted in orange means it's super bad. Highlighted in black means it's super good. Uh, the other ones we got are whenever lights at allies are damaged by percent damage effects, they recover 2% health. Uh, and for reference, a damage over time does 5% health damage. So basically, this is just a 40% reduction in damage from dots. And then if it's something else bigger, like a thermal, is ultimately insignificant. And just because something is uh, health-based damage to you, it doesn't mean it's only affecting your health. And this can only recover health. It can't recover, recover protection. So that's terrible. Uh, this one's okay, relatively. Like I said, I always start the battle with protection top 20%. It's like less situational than everything else. It's just not like impactful. So if I got this, I'd be like, yeah, okay, sure, I'll take it. Uh, this one's actually decent relatively, but it's still weak compared to the vast majority of alignment mechanics we've seen with Datacrons. Whenever Lights and Alley uses a basic ability, they gain speed up for two turns. So it's only that ally. Um, however, if you have a mass assist team, um, this might be decent. You'd have uh, speed up on everyone. Uh, if it's like a Mon Mothma team, they're going to have speed up like right from the get-go. Phoenix is going to start getting that. Uh, so it actually could be decent, but overall it's Still kind of bad um and then the ugliest one is at the beginning of their turn lights at alex have a 25 percent chance to dispel all debuffs on themselves i mean yes this could if you do like it's not even a coin flip though it's 25 percent chance like if it was even 50 percent it might be decent but it's only 25 percent chance to dispel debuffs and a lot of times if you don't have any debuffs this has not is not gonna have any impact at all uh so it is mediocre at best i guess Moving on to the faction mechanics, and this is going to be the meat of the video because there are so many to cover. We're going to start with Clone Troopers. This is the logo for Clone Troopers for some reason. Uh, looking at the best one first, in my opinion. Whenever a Clone Trooper ally uses a basic ability that's just at any point, not during their turn, so that's good. Clone Trooper allies, all of them, gain 5% crit damage until the end of the battle. Uh, so when you have heavy assisters like Omega and then Echo, you're going to be getting tons of crit damage. Like almost every turn, you're going to gain an extra 5% crit damage for the whole team. Uh, that's really going to make Omega very useful. And then Echo and a General Skywalker team or a Shock T team, if you're using that, that is actually quite good. And I think that's the best one for Clone Troopers. Another decent one is whenever an enemy is defeated by Clone Trooper, they can't be revived. Uh, it doesn't really matter with a General Skywalker team, because that already happens. But I put Talos in here, it's not a mistake. I just, I mean, this can help counter Night Sisters. That's, and like, Bounty Hunters with Bounty Hunters Resolve. Any team that has revives, it's going to be a nice little thing to throw in there. Also, Wookiees are going to have revives this season uh, under Tarful if they have his Datacron. Uh, so using that with Bad Batch might be a decent idea as well in situations uh, another good one is at the start of each clone trooper ally's turn, if they had not taken damage, they can get offense up and crit chance up. Uh, so this is only good on a general Skywalker team. I don't think it's really going to be good anywhere else. Um, it could be Bad Batch, but way less impactful than this. Um, I'd say it's good for a general Skywalker because they don't really have a way to get crit chance up and offense up on their own on that team. And they actually do need crit chance up. Unlike a lot of attackers... Uh, they have relative, they have very low crit chance, like Rex, Fives, Echo, even Arc. I don't, Arc, Arc is a strength attacker, so he doesn't have crit chance as mastery. So they just really need extra crit chance. Uh, so that is decent for them. It's situational though. It's not like overwhelming, but I still label it as good. 
Uh, next one is first time each clone trooper ally falls below 50% health, which, you know, don't want to happen. All clone trooper allies reduce their cooldowns by one and gain 10% terminator. And I put Echo and Tech here because this could be a nice little bailout mechanic. If you're going to go into a sketchy battle uh, that you know you're going to take a few hits before you have to bounce back, uh, that can help you cycle around to their good specials faster. The Dispel and Daze, the Stun, AoE Stun from Tech, uh, and the Assist from Echo. So that could come into play, but I mean, it's not super good. The worst one I think is whenever a clone trooper ally critically hit an enemy during their turn, they give ten, they gain 10% offense stacking for two turns. Uh, the fact that it's only during their turn is what's really limiting. If it was not only during their turn, it would be good, but it's so limiting and situational that it is considered bad in my eyes. Moving on to the Jedi faction, uh, this is probably the best faction in the game, so it's a great addition to this set, probably one to go for, because there's a lot of Jedi teams. Uh, the absolute best one, it's a little bit of an imbalanced uh, group of faction mechanics, because this one is way better than the others. Whenever a Jedi ally gains foresight, they deal 20% more damage, stacking max 100% until the end of the battle. That's not a buff, that's just you get it, and then you keep it. So if you have Yoda, if you have Qui-Gon team, even JMK, because he gives out foresight on his special, uh, his damage immunity special, you're going to be stacking your damage through the roof. And think of on Qui-Gon, this is going to be incredible. Uh, and then Yoda, wherever you put him, it's really going to make a big difference. It's just going to be a glass cannon team, though. I uh, bet very strong. If you combine that with armor penetration on this set, ugh, Anakin is just going to go off. Uh, another good one is at the start of... Oh, this is one you can have anywhere, and it's going to make a difference. At the start of each turn, if non-galactic legend allies have 15% or more turn meter, damage they receive is reduced by 75% until the end of the turn. So that's just... It's kind of confusing with, oh, at the start of each turn, if all allies... That just means on any given turn, so say it's the enemy takes a turn, any ally that's over 50% turn meter is going to take 75% less damage. Uh, so when you are on, I think this is most useful on offense because the AI isn't going to know what to target around. On defense, you can try to work around it, be smart, target people with low turn meter, but it is crazy. As long as it's not bugged, which it was back when Mon Mothma got there, or Rebels got this, and I had tried to use it on a Mon Mothma team, it wasn't working, and then I got rid of it, and then they fixed the bug. This is so impactful for damage reduction. It's um, it's just, it's pretty much way better than defense if you play it right, uh, so very impactful. That's gonna be generally the one to shoot for if you don't have a foresight team with Jedi. Uh, the others are kind of bad. Uh, whenever a Jedi grants a buff to another ally, they gain 10% turn meter. It only goes happens once in a turn, which makes it bad. If you could spam it with tons of debuffs, it might be better. And then at the start of each Jedi ally's turn, if they it's the one where if they haven't taken damage, they get offense up and crit, crit chance up for one turn. That's kind of bad. They have plenty of ways to get offense up and crit chance up as a faction in general. That's why it's bad here instead of clone troopers. And then when a Jedi ally attacks out of turn, they have a 25% chance to remove 10% turn meter from the target. Why do you have to qualify this so much? It's already so little, 10% turn meter, and then it's only 25% chance for it to, to do it. So effectively, it's move, removed 2.5% turn meter um, when you attack out of turn. So it's also just whenever they attack out of turn too. It's just so many qualifiers slapped onto it that it's basically worthless. So it's a very top heavy. You really want to get these two faction bonuses and the other just avoid. And now we come to Phoenix uh, and I don't have character labels because there's only going to be one Phoenix team realistically. Uh, but there's a few good ones. I'll just show all the good ones. Uh, one, all Phoenix allies start with damage immunity for two turns. Uh, it's not dispel. It's not undispellable, so it can be dispelled. That's the only weakness to it. If it was undispellable, that would just be in the ugly category and that'd be way too powerful. Uh, but that's very nice. I mean, take it on offense, and that's going to be really useful for you. I, I, in general, think Phoenix is best used for offense because there's ways around them. Uh, like Padme has does a number on Phoenix. Um, and then when it, this is a plus 100% more damage, just like Ufu's had in set 8. Uh, that can be quite strong because they recover a lot. and But it's... It's honestly less powerful because what Phoenix does where they get their damage is all the attacks out of turn. And this is only on their turn. So honestly, it's not as good as it might seem. Uh, the next one is whenever Phoenix allies are stunned, gain 50% turn meter, recover 25% health of protection. So that is just 
rewarding them for getting stunned, and I think Rex has some kind of stun dispel. Uh, anyway, that is a nice fail safe if you're going to face a stun heavy team. Uh, the first bad one is whenever a Phoenix Ally stuns an enemy, they gain speed up and offense up for two turns, ex like exposed for two turns, which can't be evaded. Uh, it sounds kind of good, but the only one that's really stunning is Zeb. And, I don't know, speed up and offense up on him, it's not it's not great. I mean, I'd rather have the damage immunity or the stun rejection type thing. Um, so not so great. Uh, but the best one is whenever a Phoenix Ally uses a special ability, Phoenix allies gain 5% counter chance and 10% offense until they're defeated. The counter chance is nice, but if you have Kanan, you already got a lot of that. If you take 10 turns uh, and use 10 special abilities, all Phoenix allies have plus 100% offense. And that just, it doesn't have a limit. It just stacks until they're defeated. Uh, they can come back if someone dies and comes back with here's backup plan, which can happen a lot more in Territory Wars, um, that will lose this. But that is crazy. They're going to be hitting super hard. That is definitely the one to shoot for and use your rerolls if you're trying to get a good Phoenix set. Next up, we got the Wookiee Faction. I think this is the best quality faction as far as this Datacron set goes. Um, Jedi's up there too, but there's some really strong Wookiee ones. Uh, the first good one is Grit. This is the return of Grit for last seen on the Empire Faction in set 4. Um, it basically makes them like Malak. Kind of, without the fear. They lose all max protection, gain that much max health, and then they take reduced damage per, from percent health effects, uh, which is going to be pretty crazy on a Tarful team because they're already so survivable. That means Plague isn't really going to do anything. Dots aren't really going to do anything. Thermals aren't really going to do anything. Uh, true damage like Bad Batch is still going to work, but that is very powerful. Uh, that also could be nice on Kersantan, uh, making him even harder to deal with. Uh, next is a good one too whenever Wookiee allies use a special ability they stun the target enemy this is a throwback to Datacron set 1 with Galactic Republic faction uh, and I think this will just be very nice with Chewbacca and 3PO and Chewie because uh, they're not on a full Wookiee team but to have a stun for each of them automatically is going to be great uh, Chewbacca already has one stun run special but uh, it's not, it's resistible so that makes it a little bit better for him and 3PO and Chewie that's going to be really nice um, another one that would be good for 3PO and Chewie or Chewbacca is whenever a Wookiee ally defeats an enemy, they take a bonus turn. And considering how often they assist on a CLS team, uh, they're going to get more kills than you might think and then churn out more turns, especially 3PO and Chewie. And there are no bad data, no, no bad set 6 on here. Um, there is an ugly, like strong ugly pair. First one is the 75% damage reduction. Um, this is going to be crazy on a Tarful team. Zalvar, I could see being pretty annoying on his own, on like a Ray team or something else. But Kersantan is where that is going to be painful. Um, I don't know if it's worth switching from set 9 to set 10 just for the, on a Java team just for this. But when set 9 goes away and then we th see this on a Java team, that is going to be painful to get through him. Once he gets closer to his turn, and he's slow, so it's gonna take a while for him to go through to his turn again. He's gonna take next to no damage. He already takes so little to begin with, so that's gonna be insane. Uh, but another ugly one, and I think this is best on just a Tarful full Wookiee team. Whenever an allied Wookiee is critically hit, Wookiee allies gain foresight for one turn and 10% defense, max 200% until the end of the battle. So unless you have buff immunity, uh, which can happen kind of a lot with Bad Batch, which I think is going to be the best counter to them, uh, they're going to have like permanent foresight. And then their defense is just going to stack. Like they need 20 critical hits to max out and get 200% defense, which is crazy. There's already tons of defense on that Tarful team. This is going to be ridiculous. I am not looking forward to Tarful, facing Tarful, even if I use Bad Batch, because uh, Bad Batch is in high demand. You might want it in more places than one. Um, and on offense, they're going to be quite potent. And that concludes the level 6 faction bonuses. We're moving on to level 9 character bonuses. Just doing Wookiee right away, uh, so it's fresh in your mind. But there's only a few here, and there's some really good, and a couple not good, or one that's not really that good. Uh, so Tarful, I think, is probably the best one. At the start of the battle, if Tarful is in the leader slot, which if he's there, he will be, uh, Wookiee allies gain 25% offense until the end of the battle. 
Whenever a Wookiee ally is defeated, all Wookiee allies' cooldowns are refreshed and they recover 100% health protection. Whenever a buff is dispelled on an enemy, all Wookiee allies gain 5% tenacity stacking. Uh, so they're going to have tons of tenacity along with tons of defense. It's just like they're an impenetrable wall, no debuffs, no damage. Uh, so they're going to be really good there. Uh, the only downside for this heal is just, I mean, an ally has to be defeated for that to happen. So if they don't have healing immunity, you take out one, they're going to just come back in full force. It, so it's really important to just target one at a time. It's still very strong. You only need them at Relic 5, so that's nice. Clone Wars Chewbacca, this one's good, but it is Clone Wars Chewbacca, so I don't know. I don't. I think it's better to have Tarful, the Tarful one on our Tarful team, but this is like the zombie one from set 9. Whenever he loses taunt, remove 50% turn meter from all enemies. And that is a potency check, which is why it's, I mean, it's not like incredible, but that is a strong effect. Uh, and then the one I think is bad is Veteran Smuggler Chewbacca. Uh, whenever he deals damage, remove 25% turn meter from the enemy. And it's not that that's a bad effect. That is a really good effect. Uh, but Veteran Smuggler Chewie doesn't attack too much. Uh, and he's not that good. So I don't think it's super valuable. But if you, already, if you already have him at R5 and you use him on a team anyway, sure, throw it in there. Moving on to Jedi level 9s. Uh, we got a couple good ones and then a bunch of bad ones. Uh, so the best probably is Jedi Knight Cal Kestis. He's the best character, and he's new, and he er, the best character from all these set nines. Uh, he's new, and this is very impactful. At the start of battle, he gains 15 stacks of Impetuous. Whenever Jedi Knight Cal Kestis gains a stack of Impetuous, grant Jedi allies speed up for two turns. So I think this is going to unlock... like uh, it, It's either going to move the insta-kill from four turns to either three or two. I think sometimes we might be able to get in two turns. Uh, he's also giving Jedi Alley speed up all the time, so it's just gonna get an insta kill fast and speed up, so it's, it's good. Another good one is Ayla. Uh, whenever another ally uses an ability on their turn, she assists, dealing 50% more damage. Uh, so that's gonna lead to a lot of stuns, and it's just ability, it's not special ability or basic ability. So she's gonna assist every single turn, uh, and she can call assists on her basic. That's gonna be crazy good on a Qui Gon team or on a JML team. Or JM, probably not JMK, but like it's gonna be good, so it's definitely worth having. And the fact that she, oh, she only needs to be R5, which I had her to anyway, because I thought that's what you needed for faction bonuses and stats. Uh, I don't have to power her up anymore to use this, and that's what's so beautiful about the reduced relic requirements. Now, the bad and ugly um, we got Qui Gon, Kanan, and Ezra. Kanan and Ezra can also apply to Phoenix. If you have a Phoenix level 6, you can roll these guys too. Uh, but the Qui-Gon, it's not good because it, it would be good on someone else. He deals 5% more damage per Relic Amplifier out, uh, on all allies present at the start of the battle. So on any normal damage dealer, that would be like crazy good, amazing. They did this before on Cad Bane, and it's because it was Cad Bane, it wasn't that good. Qui-Gon's job isn't to deal more damage. He's not a damage dealer. And it's not he gains offense that he's going to pass off when he dies. He wouldn't anyway if it's ha happened after the battle. Uh, but it's just deals more damage, so it's like big whoop. It's Qui-Gon. Kanan Jarrus, uh, whenever he he's dealt damage, reflect 20% back on the attacker, and it can't defeat enemies. So that's like staunch reprisal or something in uh, Conquest. It's okay, but it's Kanan, so it's not super useful, and you're going to want a different one for a Phoenix team if you have Rex. Uh, Ezra Bridger, at the start of his turn, he has a 20% chance, wow, that's huge, to gain 50% defense penetration for one turn. I don't know why they keep bringing this one back, this seems to always be a level 9 ability. It's terrible, it's too qualified, it's too many qualifications, 20% chance, not only one turn, just bad. Uh, so Cal, Ayla good, the rest bad. And now for the third faction, level 9s, we got Phoenix. Uh, a couple good ones. I think Chopper and Sabine are good. Chopper is, he's assisting whenever another ally uses an ability on their turn. So it's just like Ayla. Uh, I assume this is going to be an addition to the Mass Swarm. So if you have Chopper on the team, he's going to be assisting like crazy. And he also gives out buffs and resets. Cooldowns on his basics. So that's great. And Sabine Wren, whenever she crits an enemy, she gains 10% crit damage, defense penetration, and offense, max 200% until the end of the battle. So she does her AoE, gets a bunch of crits. She's also assisting out of turn when you use Rex. And that's going to be amazing. So if you have that, uh, 
it's pr that or Captain Rex is probably what you're gonna want to use. But she's gonna do so much damage with that, and that's everything. It's crit damage, defense, penetration, offense. It just it blows my mind. She's gonna be a damage machine. Bad. Uh, we got Hera and Zeb. Uh, Hera, whenever another ally recovers protection, which will happen a lot, uh, she gains foresight for one turn. She's not your first target anyway. Uh, your first target is Rex, so you're not going to be worried about her having foresight. And by the time he's down, it's going to be an easy win anyway. So that's bad. Zeb, whenever you get this is like the ATF one, Ahsoka Tana Fulcrum. Whenever he gains retribution, he also gains 10% health steal and defense, and 10 speed for the rest of the encounter. Um, so he gets retribution once in a while. I don't think he's going to get it enough for this to be impactful. That's why it's bad. And ugly, probably the best one for uh, Phoenix or clones. Um, it, it, Rex, you can roll this even if you have a clone level 6 or Phoenix. It works for both. At the start of the battle, clone trooper and Phoenix allies gain 7,567. That's Rex's number. Uh, they gain that much max health and 30 speed. Whenever another clone trooper or phoenix alley is inflicted with ability blocker days they dispel it and inflict two stacks of damage over time on all enemies for three turns which can't be evaded or evaded or resisted uh so not only can you not be ability blocked or dazed unless it's a locked buff uh you're gonna punish the enemy for it and if you're on offense they can't get around that they're just gonna do it anyway they're gonna get dots on them and help you melt through them faster so rex is amazing um, Sabine's probably second best, and then Chopper third, uh, but three very solid options for Phoenix. And finally, we have clones. This is the last faction I'm going over to level nines for. Uh, starting with Omega, this is probably the best one, in my opinion. Uh, this is exactly what Kandra's Ordo had in set six. Whenever she damages an enemy with a special ability and the enemy doesn't have armor shred, inflict armor shred for the rest of the battle. Uh, so it's not an AoE armor shred like Kandra's, so it's not quite as good, but still good. Uh, whenever she uses a basic ability and damages an enemy with armor shred, it inflict expose for two turns on that enemy, which can't be resisted, and she gains 50% protection for two turns. Uh, so you need her to take a turn first for this to start working, because you need to get that armor shred out. And then after that, she's assisting all the time, so you're going to just melt that enemy with the exposes, uh, which is the idea. So that, that's a great one for Bad Batch. Cody. Whenever another ally attacks Cody uh, during Cody's turn... Cody and that ally gain 25% turn meter. It's just not that impactful. I mean, it happens on his mass assist, which, you know, big whoop. You don't want to be using Cody. He's a bad character. Um, and then Clone Sergeant. This one's so bad it's ugly. I mean, it's just the 20%. It's We've seen it other places on Ezra too. It's just terrible. 20% chance to get 15% defense penetration for one turn. And you're not even going to know if it, it happened or not. Just, just awful. Not worth anything. That is all the abilities and stats. Let's talk about reroll priorities. For stats, there's a couple, two out of the six are bad, so rerolling is a good idea. Uh, for alignment level three, none of them are really worth that much, so don't waste any reroll attempts on this. Uh, for reference, if you're not aware, anytime you reroll anything on a Datacron, it, it, it's gonna log an increase of cost for any type of roll anywhere on the Datacron. It's not just, uh, Mark one rerolls, mark two or mark three. Uh, so after you do two rerolls, or you get two rerolls that cost 20 mats, two that cost 40, and then the rest are going to cost 80. So don't waste them rerolling alignment. However, there are some good faction uh, abilities and bad ones. So reroll to get the faction ones you want. Same with character. I mean, I think the faction abilities, there's more that you're going to want to focus on, especially like Jedi, good ones for Jedi. Uh, a couple good ones for Wookiees, but I mean, actually, Wookiees, they're all pretty good, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Just reroll for the character ones you need and can make use of. Uh, this is like the inverse of set 9. Set 9, you only want to reroll your alignment to get that one level 3. Uh, it was the best, one of the best ever we've seen, and then the rest didn't matter. Uh, but this is the reverse, the level 3s don't matter, and you want to reroll everything else. There you have it, the good, the bad, and the ugly of Datacron set 10. Let me know what you think about this set. Personally, I think uh, a lot of it's weak. It's going to be hit or miss. I don't have a Tarful team, and I don't have Captain Rex up and running, so I'm missing out on the best of it. Uh, but there are some great offensive stats and plenty of good abilities if you can get them. Uh, so let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to like and sub if you did enjoy. But that's all, folks, and I'll see you later.